This is The Lockpicking Lawyer, and today I'm continuing my Inside Perspective series, where I show various lockpicking operations from the inside of the lock. In this installment, we're going to look at disk detainer locks. And folks, this is a tough one to show you, because unlike a pin tumbler lock where you can cut away one layer and see pretty much everything, a disk detainer lock has three layers. First, there is the outer housing, which in this case is the lock body. Then we have the disc carrier, which you can see here in silver. And inside of that are the discs, which constitute the third layer. Of course, you can't cut away the discs without disabling the lock. So this model has the first two layers cut away. That allows us to see most of the stacked discs, as well as this bar that runs along the side of them. That's known as the sidebar. When each of the discs is rotated by the correct key, you'll notice that a series of notches align. When those notches are directly underneath the sidebar, that bar will drop into them, which allows the core to turn and the lock to open. If you use the incorrect key, those notches will not align and the lock will not open. Now you'll note these discs have both deep and shallow notches in them. The deep ones are true gates, the shallow ones are false gates. They make picking a little bit harder, and I'll show you how I deal with them in just a moment. But the first thing I usually do while picking a disc detainer lock is rotate all of the discs as far clockwise as they'll go. That allows me to pick and tension in opposite directions. If you don't do that, everything in the lock tends to seize up. Now I'm going to get the pick that Bosnia and Bill and I made and tension off of the first disc that puts torque on the disc carrier, which in turn pushes the sidebar into the discs. That gives us all the feedback we need to pick. The first thing I'm going to do is put each disc into a gate doesn't matter whether it's a true gate or a false gate, at least not at this point in the process. Okay, I'm working on a disc that is beyond what you can see in the cutaway, and I think everything's in a gate, which means we can try to differentiate between false gates and true gates now. We know it's a false gate either when the disc is completely binding or if there's just a tiny bit of movement. And that's the case on the first disc on the right. Now I have a large amount of movement, which means that's almost certainly a true gate. Let's move on to the next one. There we go, that's a true gate. The next one is a true gate, probably a zero cut. Another true gate. Okay, I'm on the third one from the left and that one's in a false gate. We just moved it to a true gate. You can see it has a lot of movement now. Second one from the left, moved it from a false gate to another false gate. Another false gate. There we go, lots of movement, that's a true gate. Now I'm moving on to the last one that we can see on this cutaway. From one false gate to another, and we just got it into the true gate, and the lock opened up. Okay, folks, I realize that the view isn't quite as good as we'd all like, but I hope it still gave you a little more insight into how I pick disc detainer locks. In any case, that's all I have for you today. If you do have any questions or comments about this, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.